In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Saint Damiana was born in 3rd century Egypt and was the only child to her pious Christian parents. When still young, her mother departed and her father Mark became her sole caretaker. Mark loved his daughter dearly and taught her well the Christian faith. Saint Damiana was only 15 when her father wanted her to get married to one of his noble friends, but Saint Damiana refused. As was once the great desire of our Holy Mother St. Mary, St. Demiana also had no intention to marry but preferred to devote her life solely to God. The soul that loves God has its rest in God and in God alone, St. Isaac the Syrian. At such a young age, being the only child in a wealthy family, St. Demiana could have desired many other things. She could have chosen a life of leisure and luxury, but just as St. Paul said, Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. Philippians 3.8 So too, our beloved saint understood the vanity of, such, of living such a life and instead chose the better part. Luke 10.42 St. Demiana asked her father to build her a house on the outskirts of the city so that she and her 40 friends could be away from the world and consecrate their lives to God. But God's grace, her, requested, her request was granted. Her father built her a beautiful palace, and St. Demiana became the leader of a blessed gathering of devout virgins. For many ensuing years, they, they lived a peaceful life of purity, asceticism, and worship, providing for themselves and for the poor by means of their handmade work. At that time, the Roman Emperor Diocletian, a non-believer who greatly revived the worship of Roman gods, tortured and killed Christians who refused to worship the idols Apollos and Artemis. When St. Demiana's father was asked to offer incense to the idols, he, at first, refused and recanted when Diocletian offered him a higher position in the Roman Empire. When the news of her father's denial reached St. Demiana, she went straight away to him and said, I would have preferred to hear about your death rather than to hear that you have renounced your faith and forsaken the God who created you. If you do not return to your first faith and renounce the worship of stones, you are not my father and I'm not your daughter. And she left him. Her father was greatly moved by the words of his daughter and he wept bitterly. In haste, Mar got up immediately and went to Diocletian and declared his true faith in Jesus Christ. Diocletian tried to change his mind, but this time he was unyielding. Diocletian then ordered his soldiers to kill him and St. Mark received the crown of martyrdom. When the emperor learned that St. Demiana was responsible for changing her father's mind, he sent her a prince along with his army of soldiers to the palace and instructed them to persuade the saint to worship the idols or to sentence her to death if she refuses. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin, Hebrews 11.25 when St. Demiana saw the soldiers approach the palace, she prayed to God to strengthen her faith until death and gave her friends the option to escape. The forty virgins chose to remain and inherit eternal life rather than, God, rather than deny God for the sake of life and temporary vanity. As it is possible to verbally describe the sweetness of honey to one who has never tasted honey, so the goodness of God cannot be clearly communicated by way of teaching if ourselves are not able to penetrate the goodness of the Lord by our experience. St. Basil the Great The prince went to her with 200 soldiers and the instruments of torture. When he arrived at her palace, he said to her, I am a messenger sent from the Emperor Diocletian. I come to call upon you according to the emperor's orders to worship his gods so that he can grant you all that you want. The saint shouted in his face saying, May God denounce the messenger and the one by whom he was sent. Don't you have any shame at all to call stones and wood gods which are inhabited by devils? There is no God in heaven or on earth except one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the eternal creator, the everlasting, who is everywhere, who knows all the secrets, 
who and who can throw you in hell where is the everlasting torment as for me i am the maidservant of my master and my savior jesus christ and his good father and the holy spirit the holy trinity him i confess and upon him i depend and in his name i die and by him i live forever when saint Demiana would not deny her faith the prince became exceedingly angry and ordered her to be placed in the hinbazine the squeezing press until her blood poured out of her body on the ground and finally threw her half-dead body in jail. That night, the angel of the Lord, Archangel Michael, appeared to her, touched her with his heavenly wings, and healed her wounds. The prince used all his evil imagination to torture Saint Demiana, once by tearing her flesh and another time by placing her in boiling oil. Through it all, the Lord raised her up safely. This repeated itself for many days. Her faith and miraculous healing helped enlighten many. When the prince saw that all his attempts were in vain, before the steadfastness of this pure virgin, he ordered her beheaded, and all of the other forty virgins with her. Thus, they all received the crowns of martyrdom. On the last day before her martyrdom, our Lord Jesus himself came to her and told her, Have courage, my chosen one. I have prepared for you the crown of your wedding in heaven. Your name will be remembered forever, as it will be the cause for many miracles. And in this place, a great church will be built to honor your blessed name. A few years later, when King Constantine came to power, he sent his mother, Queen Helen, to St. Demiana's palace. Queen Helen buried all the bodies with great honor and placed St. Demiana's body on a bed made of ivory, decorated it with silk linen, and built a church there in her name. St. Demiana was always faithful to our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and through prayer, prayer she was able to endure the torture and pain. Throughout her life, St. Demiana stood firm, and in the end, she was crowned. Her stand against her father's weakness is quite admirable. She put aside all family attachments and concentrated on the main goal, saving a lost soul. In the first few centuries of Christianity, Christians were tortured and executed for their faith. Today, Christians, especially our Tuado Church and the Oriental Orthodox, are attacked, ridiculed, and mocked throughout life in such places as school and work. Standing steadfast, holding on to the Lord Jesus Christ, and always maintaining faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior will deliver us from these temptations, and we too will be crowned at the end. St. Demiana's Feast is on January 21st, 13th of the Giz month of Tri. May the prayers and the blessings of this great martyr, St. Demiana, be with us all. Amen. Glory be to God.